What's up guys and welcome back for another EVE Online video. Uh, this is the second part in my uh, um, wormhole workshop. Um, so tonight if you're, if, you're new, if you're just discovering this video and you're new to wormholes check out episode 1. I'll put a link to it here um, where we talk about the basics of um, probe scanning um, and some tips and tricks on how, how you can improve your technique and speed. Um, but this video, what I want to cover is basically how you can uh, sort of identify where you're going and where a wormhole might take you once you've scanned it down. So the idea being, we've just done the first video, we've we've worked out how to probe scan and we have scanned down our first wormhole. Um, we've warped in and this is what we can see. So you can see from up here that I'm in I'm in, in wormhole space already, I live in wormhole space. Um, but if this is the first time you're doing this, you'll probably be warping in from high sec. But all the principles are the same. Um, I'll just be taking a bit more care, <laughs> probably, um, because wormhole space is incredibly dangerous. Um, first one, you've got no local chat. Um, no one pops up in here. There could be hundreds of people in this system and I wouldn't know. Um, so you'll see I'm here in my Astro, cloaked up, to try and keep myself a little bit hidden. And I've scanned down and warped to this wormhole. Um, so how do we identify what this wormhole is, where it goes, what it does, any of that? How do, how do we know where we're going in advance of jumping through? There's a whole host of information you can get um, from the overview info page and just from looking at a wormhole. We're going to go through all of it in this video. Um, I'll cover uh, as much of it as I can on this first wormhole, but then I, for the rest of the video, will be trying to basically just give you an example of the major types of wormhole um, as we move through, um, just so you can look at it and, and we can do the visual inspection for each one, uh, so that you can use this video as a resource when we um, when we go through. Uh, like when you're off scanning, you scan down a wormhole, you want to know where it goes, you can go back to this video, skip to the right bit, and, and we'll be able to hopefully sort it out. Um, there are a few resources I want to mention. I'll put a link down to in the um, in the uh, comment section. Sorry. Um, first one, as always, we're in wormhole space, and I bang on about it all the time, but for me, it's the best resources on wormholes, and it's um, Ashy's blog. She's the, I think she's the CEO of um, Foxholers Corporation. Um, they are uh, pretty famous in the wormhole world. Um, and her blog is just excellent. It's such a good resource. Um, it's called, uh, so you need to go to ashy.inspace. Sorry, uh, ashyin.space. Uh, there'll be a link to it in the comments. That's a brilliant resource. Um, anything you need to on wormholes. Um, but also a lot of that information is, a lot of this information is in that video um, and she also links you to the Eve University wiki page um, for their information on this um, and that's also where I've got a bunch of my knowledge from um, which are, uh, again is linked in the comments. Uh, my main motivation for doing this video um, is even though the information is on those pages that's all static, they're screenshots and images, with this video you get an idea of how it actually looks uh, in game properly and you can we you know we can spin around it and have a look so check out those resources they're excellent um, but we'll crack on with the video as I say we've warped in we've got to this wormhole what can we see I'm going to start with the overview right so up here we've got a wormhole and you can see this is the type of wormhole it is right so wormhole p060 that is the wormhole type this code here is very important um, there's, it actually, I mean, it actually tells you exactly where it goes. This code here tells you exactly where this wormhole comes from and goes to. Um, so technically, that's all the information you need right there. Uh, however, keeping track of all the codes is absurdly difficult. Um, like I've got, I've got a bunch of them in my character bio down here. You can see there's loads of them. Uh, this this isn't anywhere close to all of them. Um, I don't have any of the uh, frigate holes, for example, which I'll, I'll, I'll try and touch on later in the video. Um, 
but you know, this is just a, a sample of the main ones. Um, so if you want to use my bio as a resource, obviously feel free, and what end address. But you can see here, P060 is leads to a class one wormhole. That's what this means. So you know from this code, um, and I, I can tell you actually that I'm in a uh, C4 wormhole. Um, so P060 means we is a wormhole that leads from a C4 to a C1. But that's a code that you don't want to. That you know that's fine. Um, if we go right-click show info, or if you've just gone show info up here you get this description up. Um, this line is the same all the time but you've got a, f a bit of imp a few bits of important information in here. This second line, this wormhole seems to lead that's the same but then here into unknown parts of space. There are several different messages here that give you an indication of where it leads. If it goes into known space it'll give you the security of the wormhole and I'll I have a few examples of these later on in the video, but it will say it leads into high security space, low security space, or null, um, null sec space, or null security space, I think it says. So that means you know you're going into um, K space, so known space, and you'll know what security it's going to be. So if you're jumping out into high sec, you're going to be fine, you're going to be safe, all good. If you're jumping through the wormhole into low sec, prepare to be attacked. Then, so this me, this says unknown parts of space. Um, that means it leads into another wormhole, and there are three different messages that can be here, right? Um, I can't remember if I mentioned in the other video or not, but there are different classes of wormhole. Um, C1 to 6 are the basic types. There's a couple of others that I might touch on at the end if we get lucky, but the C1 to 6, C1 being the lowest level wormhole, um, all the combat sites are the easiest and the loot is the lowest, up to C6 where the combat sites are large fleets required or capital ships required um, and also but also the loot is worth ridiculous amounts of ISK. So what does this mean? You can get more, so this doesn't just mean it leads to any wormhole, there are three different messages that can come up here um, for wormhole space. One is unknown parts of space, another is dangerous unknown parts of space, and a third is deadly unknown parts of space. So this message, just unknown parts of space, means it can lead to either a C1, a C2, or a C3 wormhole. So already we've narrowed it down, this destination, if we, if we don't look at the code. Um, uh, one of the reasons this is important, I will mention just really quickly, there's a type of wormhole called K162, and that's just the exit. So if we were to jump through this wormhole, the other side of the wormhole would say wormhole K162. Um, and so you can't work out where that goes from the code. Um, every, Basically every wormhole that exists, one side of it is a good code, the other side of it is K162. So that doesn't narrow it down for you at all. I've just been lucky enough that I'm this side that says P060. If it says K162, you need to do all this other stuff to work out where it goes. I hope that makes sense. Um, uh, again, I'll probably find one. I might even jump through this one, um, but I'll, I'll probably find another one later in the video to talk that through a bit more in detail. Um, but as I say, so this sentence here narrows it down to C1, 2, or 3. Um, so that's step one. That this is an important line. These other lines are very important, but less so for the purposes of this video. Um, it's important information, but it doesn't help identify where it goes. I'll, t I'll touch on it briefly, but I'll probably do a more in-depth video on these kind of things in future, but I don't want this video to get super long. Um, the, this wormhole is beginning to, to decay. This sentence tells you about um, the life cycle of the wormhole. So most wormholes last 24 hours, give or take an hour or two. Um, they don't. That's not a, a blanket rule, by the way. I think there are some that can last 16 hours, but in general, most of them last 24 hours. 
and w there's four I think different sentences here that could be that can tell you where it is roughly in its 24 hour cycle uh, but I, I won't go into any more detail with that similarly the second line um, all wormholes have a limit on how many sh like what mass of ship can pass through it um, obviously tiny ships carry very little mass so thousands of them can go through big ships like um, some of the big battleships or even obviously some capitals or an orca or something that pass through they have massive amounts of mass and so only a couple of them can pass through um, this sentence tells you basically how much gives you there's again there's four I think different sentences here maybe five um, and this tells you roughly in the like how much mass has passed through the wormhole and whether it's going to collapse or not but again not important for identifying where it goes this last sentence wouldn't doesn't look like it's in it would help identify where the wormhole goes but it does so this tells you what size ship can pass through the wormhole right as it as it says um, up to medium sized ships means anything up to a battlecruiser size hull so battleships or bigger can't go through um, with the exception of the Nesta which is the Sisters of Eve battleship um, that's the exception to the rule because it's because it's a um, really small battleship um, but yeah everything up to up to a um, battleship sorry everything up to a battle cruiser uh, and including can go through if it says medium sized ships uh, and you've got all the other things here as well you, you can get small medium large extra large they're, they're the four different sizes uh, the reason this is helps identify where the wormhole goes is this medium sized ships can only pass through this wormhole uh, only happens for C1 wormholes so class 1 wormholes um, they are the only ones with this medium sized ship limitation as a general rule like I'm not going to say that's definitive and if anyone knows differently please drop a comment um, and so that we can all learn together um, but I'm yet to come across a medium sized wormhole that doesn't go to a C1 so you'd know from two things here you know unknown parts of space C1 2 or 3 medium sized ships narrows that down to a C1 so from the information page you can work out that this wormhole goes to a C1 cool we can so we've learned that completely from the information page that is excellent we can do the same thing by looking at the wormhole we can get the same information so there are a couple of things to look at um, let me go into cinematic so things like the text and my bookmark and stuff aren't there but so this is what your wormhole looks like right you've got a few different things to look at here you've got this halo or corona around the wormhole um, there's this like wavy hue that's outside it and then uh, you've got the wormhole itself which is this like bubble um, and th remember this is all 3d you can spin around it completely um, but you've got this bubble in the middle they're the two main areas and there's a few things to look at here the halo tells you what size ship is allowed to pass through so the color of the halo here is important um, I'll just go we got the four sizes of ship um, and you, you can see four different colors in this halo the smallest size so smaller ships only is like a dark blue I'll find an example later on in the video uh, this as we know is medium sized ships so this sort of turquoisey blue green uh, obviously it's not so clear if you're looking directly into the sun but this turquoisey blue green um, means medium sized ships large ships is grey or silver uh, again I'll find an example later and extra large ships is like an orange um, and again I'll get an example later on in the video so straight away again uh, because we know that this can only go medium ships can only go to a C1 we could look at this see the color of this and immediately you know this goes to a C1 bam sorted do I want to go to a C1 yes or no jump through or don't the next one is looking the 
bubble itself also tells you what class of wormhole or part of space um, it goes to, right? The color and pattern inside this tells you where it goes. So, th so this is what a C1 looks like. Um, and it's important to be able to spin around. This is why I wanted to to make the video um, and not just rely on screenshots because if you're looking at the wrong side of the of the wormhole, you can't see it. So this is the wrong side in inverted commas. It's just you've just got like a dark, like a dark blob, nothing to see, kind of purpley. Also, this white mark here, you can ignore it. It's the reflection from the sun in in our solar system. That's why it moves around. The sun is, yeah, over there. So right now, no white blob, just sun. As we turn away, white blob comes in as the reflection of the sun. What we want to find is this part, right? So if you're looking over here, spin around till you can see this part. And I'm just going to say, I'm not going to like describe it in words because you can see it. This is what a C1 wormhole looks like. So remember it or come back to this bit of the video next time you are uh, trying to work out whether or not you're looking at a C1 is this purple around the outside bit going a bit lighter around uh, in a bit of a halo down into a dark center I did say it out loud as well but it didn't really need to okay so that's a C1 um, and again this is something that I'm going to touch on much later in, in not this video um, but I'll do a proper video on it later um, you know the sentences in in the info about the life cycle and the mass. You can also vaguely work them out by looking at it, um, not to as as fine a degree, but basically, if the wormhole is visibly wobbling, like the edge of this bubble is wobbling drastically, not like this. This is this is nice, gentle wobbling. If it's wobbling drastically, it means the wormhole is um, at what's called end of life um, or EOL you'll hear people refer to it as um, that means at some point in the next four hours the wormhole is going to collapse and disappear uh, and you can't tell when in that four hours um, I like you, apparently it gets wobblier the closer but it's really difficult to distinguish that by the by eye and similarly with the mass um, if it's close to being critical mass, um, because it's had its re mass reduced so much, the size of the bubble shrinks, um, and shrinks to quite a good degree. But again, it's difficult to really eyeball, you're better off looking at the text. Alright, so that's a C1, that's a C1 wormhole right there. Um, I'll now scan down another wormhole, and we'll see what we get to next in the video. Catch you guys in a second. So this is a C2 wormhole. Um, it looks pretty similar to a C1. Uh, there are obviously they they do it different. There are differences, but I often forget what they are, and I do confuse them when looking at them myself standalone. Um, so yeah, uh, have have a study of it. Let's go into cinematic again this is what you're looking for this side so we'll look at that for a second um, and again if you spin to the other side there's no information you have just got this dark purple blob so you gotta make sure you turn you turn it around so that you can see that is what you're looking for for a C2 this is a class 2 wormhole and if we have a look at the other information um, the code it is a K162 um, because this is an exit from the wormhole so no information to be gained from that K162 which is why you then would open up the show info uh, you can see that at least the unknown parts of space which means it, it could go C1 2 or 3 but based on the size here larger ships you know that eliminates it being a C1 um, so therefore it has to be a C2 or a C3 and then the colors are, are different enough between C2 and C3 that you can work it out pretty easily um, and then also just a reminder if we then go and look at the whole thing here um, 
the if you ignore the sun the reflection of the solar system um, the corona around the outside is silver which means larger ships can pass through therefore it's not a C1 and you've got the uh, C2 uh, colouring in there which we'll study again just real quick um, and also you can see that the wormhole is not wobbling heavily so it's not end of life so we're okay to jump through which um, I will talk about slightly later on uh, so yeah that's C2. Moving on to C3. Uh, so C3 is a pretty distinct. Um, I find they're pretty unique. Let's drop into cinematic um, if I can. Like that's a C3. Um, yeah, there's. It doesn't look like any other type of wormhole. Um, so really nice and easy to identify. It's yeah, this kind of pinky red in a, a lighter greeny background greeny grey these are the first sort of introduction of the red as you work your way up wormhole classes so when we see a C4 in a second that'll be the first one that sort of really got some proper red in it but this is C3 is just starting to introduce the red into the background um, don't worry about the corona here this is reflection from the system I'm in uh, so it's just you know this background being reflected in it but that's what you're looking for in a C3 and as with all the other ones remember this all in 3D so um, you know if you zoom in on the wormhole and you see that or you see like that or something just spin it around until you see what you recognize which is which is that for a C3 oh and someone just splashed so I mean that was pretty good to see um, and here uh, that is the visual and the sound that is made when someone goes through a wormhole so um, just like there's a sound when you jump through a stargate uh, th there's also a sound when you jump through a wormhole and so if you are hunting or you're trying to avoid being captured or something you can sit near wormholes and listen and look and um, you know if someone's jumped through before they decloak which is uh, pretty bloody useful uh, so hopefully you guys saw that it'll be difficult for me to replicate um, that heron um, yeah but that's uh, that's how you go um, that's what it sounds like so that's C3 next to C4 um, see you in a sec okay for our C4 example <coughs> um, I'm inside a C5 wormhole um, but looking uh, at a gate into a C4 wormhole um, so there's a, um, you can tell from the code like an E175 is specifically a wormhole traveling from a C5 into a C4 um, but again if you uh, want to do things by the code some of them are included in my bio so we should be able to find C4 E175 so that so you know C4 is the destination um, but if you're on the other side and it's a K162, then you will need to look at the uh, the wormhole itself. Um, this is a type of wormhole that's giving off this effect, so the colours are slightly um, slightly off. But if I go cinematic, that's what you're looking for. This is the this is the important side. Again, if you go this side, you get nothing, none of the information. So make sure you are spinning around and you're looking for that that thing right there this is much this is the first of like the red um, wormhole so as you go up in the danger the wormholes become redder in look um, just as a general uh, like rule of thumb um, ignore this this is a reflection of the Sun so opposite the Sun is there um, but this is this is what you're looking for um, the, as I say, the wormhole effect is uh, affecting, how, um, interrupting how this looks a little bit, but that's that's what you're looking for. A bit redder, um, but with this white sort of nebula in the middle. That's a C4 wormhole, um, and also uh, the corona. So from C5 to C4, large ships can pass through, um, and that's what this corona is showing you. So this white 
or, or white or grey or silver, whatever you want to call it, Corona uh, is what allows large ships to pass through. Um, okay, so there's the C4 example. So here we have an example of an EOL or end of life wormhole. Um, so just to reiterate what I said at the beginning of the video, uh, this means that this hole could collapse any time in the next four hours. Um, and basically you can see this wibble wobble wibble wobble <laughs> um, like jelly uh, bubble basically. Um, so this is a C4 wormhole you can tell from what we're looking at and the corona. Um, but yeah w it's uh, very wobbly around the edges and that's how you know it is end of life. And it's also um, included in this first line as mentioned before this is one of the other statuses for the life cycle of a wormhole. So the wormhole is reaching the end of its natural lifetime so EOL end of lifetime that's what this looks like this uh, this wobbling so let's just quickly go to cinematic so you can see it properly um, you can see it all the way out as well it's obviously harder to see when you're far away but it does wobble but if you come in nice and close that's clearly wobbling um, compared to the other ones we've seen in this video so far so there's that one and here we have a C5. Um, so bear in mind again that I'm currently sat inside a C4 when looking at this C5 because it makes a difference to a couple of the bits that we look at. But first one, the code H900, that means you're going from a C4 to a C5. Um, and you can get it from what Enderas is bio if you need to. Um, first thing uh, to note. Um, this is the same for the C4, I can't remember if I mentioned it on the C4, but this passage here uh, doesn't just say unknown, it says this wormhole seems to lead to a dangerous unknown part of space. So dangerous unknown means you're going into a C4 or a C5. Um, so if you don't want to do it by looking, you know that from this you're going either into a C4 or a C5. But by looking, Apparently there's a legion in this wormhole, I need to be a bit careful of. But by looking, that's what a C5 looks like. This sort of deep red, deep sort of dark red with plenty of black as well. This is a C5. Go to the other side and you've got nothing, just, just darkness. But here, that's what you're looking for. That is a C5 wormhole. And the other thing I wanted to mention, why it's important that we go from C4 to C5, is because we are because there's a C4 as part of the pairing only large ships are allowed to pass through which is why you got this silver corona um, C5s are allowed extra large ships which are um, so capitals um, but not from the C4 so if the, if we were traveling from a C5 to C5 uh, a C5 to C6 or a C5 to um, K space there could be an extra large with a um, sort of golden orangey corona which I will try and find for our C6 or our Nullsec um, so yeah take one last quick look and then we'll move on alrighty and um, last but not least we have the final of the main wormhole classes the C6 wormhole uh, this one is pretty easy to identify uh, very red like super red like it looks pretty scary um, but also show info it's the only one that says can lead into deadly unknown parts of space you see deadly you know C6 um, this is, I'm in a C5, so again, C5 to C6, very large, so you can see the um, golden aura. But uh, if we go here, you're just looking for this red. So this side, this is the side with nothing in it, you want to ignore that. But then spin around, you've got the deep, deep red, <laughs> nice and vibrant. And yeah, that's what a C6 looks like. Um, Personally, 
if I were unless if I was scanning down wormholes and I came across a C6, I would not go in there unless I had no other route, um, because there's really nothing in there for a solo explorer. Um, you know, if you want to do combat sites in a C6, you need a dread or you need a fleet. Um, there's no decent relic or data sites in there that you can do as a solo. Um, yeah, really yet to find anything I can do by myself on a C6, and that is that is the point of them. Like they're worth so much isk. Uh, so if you are able to farm them in a dread or in a fleet, then you can really roll in the cash. But yeah, there's not too many of them either. Um, but there it is. There's the C6. So that's classes one, two, three, four, five, and six, all added in. And now we'll um, go through the K space ones and then we'll see what we've got left after that alrighty and so now we're going to go through the um, known space wormholes these are um, probably well they're easier to identify because you need to just do right click show info but um, ultimately they are a bit harder if you're just looking at the wormhole because um, what you can see in the background is the um, the region that of K space. So, in this case, um, we are looking at a high set coal. And why? How can you tell that? Basically, you go right click, show info as always. And where it would normally say unknown space, it says this wormhole seems to lead to high security space. Nice and easy. You know, you can run through here and you get to high sec straight away. Lovely stuff. Um, and if you want to then identify where in high sec you're going to end up, um, it's all about the, the color of the wormhole as per. Um, and as I said, this this reflects the uh, region of space you're going to end up in. So in this case, um, like I, I'm not going to list all of these in the video because I, to be fair, I don't know them, and I'm not going to come up with whatever it is 30 different videos uh, uh, clips because that will make the video very long. Um, but basically this is a uh, domain so if you vaguely know um, what regions look like when you're flying through them you know um, Kaldari tends to be blue uh, Amar tends to be yellow Mimitar tends to be red and Galente tends to be like this greeny color that's pretty that's, that's good enough for me that's what I work on um, but there are some that I you also just sort of know <coughs> relatively well and will learn so I know this is domain because um, uh, that's where Amar is and so looking for domain wormholes quite a lot and similarly um, I would recognize the forge um, for Jita basically um, they're the two that I, I know the look of um, for sure so this is high sec this is domain um, and the size restrictions on the wormhole um, they don't there are no restrictions on um, the entry into K space. The restriction on size is based on the wormhole that you're coming from or into. So uh, if it was a C1, then uh, if I was in a C1, then this would be a medium hole. If I was in a C5 or a C6, this would be an extra large hole. Um, it is possible to get frigate holes anywhere, um, but because I'm in a C3 currently, C2, C3, C4, it's all large, so this silver. So that's high sec. Now we're going to find a low sec and another sec and do the same thing. So this is a low sec hole, um, and as you can see, it's also end of life. So um, similar to the C4 that we showed a second ago, um, very wobbly. Uh, the reason I'm not going to show, I'm not going to show another low sec hole because the region doesn't really matter. Uh, so this is quite a good um, one to demonstrate. But basically, same again, if you want to find out if it's low sec, show info. Wormhole seems to lead to low security space. And it's also reaching the end of its natural lifetime. Um, and this one, uh, even though it's wibbly wobbly, this is Galente space. Um, as I just mentioned, they are... Um, the regions of Galente tend to be green or turquoise. Um, so this is what one of those regions looks like. I actually don't know which region this is, um, although one second I can find out. 
it is uh, sync liaison um, so that's what sync liaison looks like we've seen domain which is in Amar this is what sync liaison in Galente looks like and now we should find a null set call see so ya yeah. okay and so we've found our null sec example um, and we're getting pretty lucky with uh, this null sec is taking us into um, sort of uh, I know there aren't really regions in Nelsec. Um I mean sorry there aren't regions via like Empire faction but this is going to be a Nelsec region that's like in the same part of space as Kaldari because um, it's this blue so this is what this blue tends to be what Kaldari space looks like it's Nelsec so there is no such thing as Kaldari space but you sort of I hope, hopefully you get my meaning um, so uh, we'll just we've got the code this time Z142. That means um, traveling from C5 to Nalsec because I'm currently in a C5. Uh, can here we go. Can lead into Null Security Space. And now uh, I also am able to show you the different Corona. Um, very large ships can pass through this wormhole, which means uh, capitals are, or below. So you can get dreadnoughts or. Um, carriers and things can come through this wormhole. A uh, raw call as well. Um, and so the way that manifests itself is this deep orange um, corona around the wormhole. That That's what an extra large or a very large wormhole looks like. This nice big orange. And they sort of are physically larger. Like it's obviously it's difficult. It's difficult to tell because you can never have two wormholes right next to each other to find the perfect zoom level but they are just are bigger as well like this corona goes out a lot further than the other ones um, but so yes this is our null sec example with an extra large corona coming from a c5 um, and just a reminder that extra large is uh, for c5 c6 um, as long as it's not connecting to a, a lower class of wormhole Alrighty, C5 to Nullsec. Um, so I've actually forgotten what I've included in the video so far. Uh, so just in case I haven't put a frig hole in here yet, uh, I wanted to include this one. Um, but basically this is another Nullsec hole. Um, and so it serves as a good example anyway to show that the different uh, regions of K-Space look completely different. So uh, we just looked at one that led to like some blue area and now this is still Nelsec but that looks completely different some weird dark thing with a thin nebula running through it um, all right and just to prove it this is still Nelsec um, but this is a what we c uh, call a frigate hole but it takes frigates and destroyers um, and it's this blue uh, and the corona is much smaller so actually this is quite a good example as directly after the um, uh, extra large you can see the corona doesn't expand nearly as far from the wormhole the whole thing is a lot smaller um, but this blue is um, smaller ships only so here we have one of the special types of wormhole um, which you'll come across every now and again, these, these kind of things. Uh, this actually leads to a C13 wormhole. So I think I mentioned sure earlier in the video, you've got classes 1 to 6 uh, are the standard wormholes. And then you've got some others way up there. So C12, there's just one, that's Thera, which I think I've got a clip of here. But then this is a C13. And there are a few C13s uh, knocking about. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about them here, just how to identify them. But basically, what's special about them is they are a um, they're a special type of wormhole that is specifically only for small ships, so frigates and destroyers. Uh, every wormhole that leads into a C13 will be uh, small ships only, with this blue halo. Um, and when you're inside, it is a wolf ray effect, um, which is like the armor and small turret bonuses. But the, the effect is a 
class 6 level effect uh, but then all the combat sites and everything inside are C3 level but so that means basically you go in there in a confessor because of this wolf rate effect suddenly you've got decent armor you're pumping out a thousand dps and you can move nice and fast which means you can then run c3 what combat sites in a destroyer which is which is pretty cool um so they're kind of crazy and it's a shattered wormhole space which again i'm not going to go into too much detail about but that's all c13s wolf uh, shattered c6 wolf rates with c3 com combat sites um but yeah but this is what they look like um they look very different to C1 to 6 so if you warp in you see it looking like this um, every time I find one of these my first thought is oh, okay this is going to K space because it could look like a region in low, low sec somewhere maybe um, but it's not this is this is what Thera looks like and again make sure you are um, why can I not we go can go cinematic there for some reason make sure you're looking at this image of it if you go around like that's not bad that still gives you it but that's the real image although the Sun is changing the color slightly but if you end up this side obviously there's no no information on it so you've got to loop around till you find the information um, this is an un slightly unfortunate one uh, because of the position of the Sun making it more orange than it would be um, like if we come around from the sun a little bit, it's it's more of a mix of colours than just the orange. Um, but you're looking for something that looks a bit like this if you're looking for C13s. Um, and again, we can just go through everything else. Uh, the code is A009. Um, I actually don't know if that's always the case for a C13, but it probably is. Uh, but the 00 uh, followed by a number um, means it's a frigate hole. So um, Q003 is a frigate hole. Uh, by frigate hole, we mean small ship hole. Destroyers can go through them as well. Um, but if you so if you've got a letter two zeros followed by a number, that's always going to be a small small ship hole. Um, and then again in here, uh, only the smaller ships can pass through. Um, and because it's a C3 equivalent combat sites on the inside, it just says to unknown because unknown leads to C123. So because it's considered a C3 on the inside with the with the availability of sites, it's written as unknown here. Um, but it looks it looks very different to a C3, C12 or 3, um, any anywhere. So. That's uh, that's a C13. I'm glad we tracked one down to be able to add to the video. And last but definitely not least, uh, we have a Thera wormhole or Thera or Thera, however you pronounce it. Um, now this is a very special wormhole as well. This is a I think I think it's technically a C12, but it's the only one in the game. And the reason it's special, without going into too much detail about it, is um, it's like a Sisters of Eve owned wormhole. It's the only wormhole in the game with structures, uh, NPC stations in there. There's, a, I think, at least two. Um, and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Oh, an Astro about to splash in, or is it just left? Yeah, it's splashing in. There's the splash. Nice. Um, yeah, and it's a huge system that connects um, all of New Eden, basically. I think it has 12 uh, static wormholes um, that connect to all different regions of space. So there's like three high sec, <coughs> something like that, four low sec, four null sec, and then like five wormholes, you know, something like that uh, connection. So you can use it to shortcut th all through um, New Eden which is really cool um, and so I'm pleased I found one and can show it to you guys uh, we got a bit unlucky with the Sun position because like that's the main part of the wormhole but doesn't look like any others so this side same as all with just the black but here is multicolored and looks 
different to all the others. Uh, let's just do this real quick. It is unfortunate that the sun's there because it's tinting, it's tinting the colours just a little bit. But you know, that's what it looks like. Um, extra large, a lot of them, but there are some frigate holes and things as well. Um, but also, uh, this is how you can find it out, right? Unique phrasing there. This wormhole seems to lead to the unique and mysterious Thera system. So it tells you where it's going to go, which is which is nice. Um, so yeah, that's Thera. Uh, and this is going to be my last one. Um, hopefully you guys have found the uh, video useful. I know when I first learned how to identify wormholes, it made a huge difference to my scanning and bookmarking ability. Um, and basically my whole wormhole experience. So hopefully this helps some of you guys. Um, it is the second video in my wormhole workshop uh, where we're just trying to go through and describe all things wormhole um, to make sure people can get started and get comfortable. Um, so stay tuned for the next one which will be on uh, de-scanning. We had probe scanning, first one, then this, and then we're going to go on to de-scanning. Um, and yeah, so if you want to see that and you're liking the videos so far, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you are enjoying the videos, please give them a thumbs up. Um, it helps me know uh, what you guys like seeing. Um, and I can create more content on it. Um, and so yeah, uh, please leave a comment if you've got any suggestions or anything else you'd like to see. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.